Hello everyone here at OS Reviews, and this video will be taking a closer look at tips and tricks for the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, and more generally EMUI 8.0 based on Android Oreo. So let's start with the lock screen. Now one of the more interesting things about uh, this phone is that the screen, as you can see here, unlocks kind of by itself whenever you flip it around. It's actually using the accelerometer, and when it detects that motion has been activated, uh, or if you've picked up the phone from a table or from your pockets, the screen will turn on for convenience. All right, so now going into the actual tips and tricks, the first thing that we'll start with is actually going to be screen recording. So let's say you're playing back a video, you can use your knuckles to double tap on the display and that begins a screen recording and you can actually hide this prompt if you want to. It begins in three seconds as a countdown. I can tap once to begin it uh, regardless and it will now begin recording the screen uh, video that's playing on your display in addition to touches will show up as well as this little dot and you can see that when you're viewing back the video. Um, it can be a great way to show tutorials if you're a teacher it's a great way to uh, record live sessions things like that and it also picks up your voice so it's also recording using the external mic as well so as I'm talking here it's also being recorded into this clip and playing back this uh, clip here touches will show up as well as this little you can hear again the audio has actually been picked up fairly well. Next, there's a simple app that's called Mirror Under Tools, and it's just using the front-facing camera to give you a reflection of what you see. You can also digitally zoom, but the trick that I'm showing you here is if you blow into the microphone in this app, you can actually get this fake uh, kind of condensation to go onto the mirror, and you can now have to draw on it to be able to see different parts. It's kind of a fun little Extra. Next, to access split-screen multitasking, you can use your knuckles again and draw one line on the display to create a multitasking window where I can now have two apps running in the same time. Also using your knuckles, instead of using two knuckles to double tap to have a screen recording, you can use just one knuckle double tap to have a screenshot. So for instance, I can double tap here and that can do a screenshot. I can also use what's called a, sc a scroll shot and to tilt the phone downwards or upwards to capture longer uh, areas than just uh, one static page. In EMUI, I can also drag down on any home page to have access to a quick universal search. You can have ability to search through both apps, contacts, messages, and the web directly. So for instance, I've typed in Huawei and I can search the web directly or launch into one of the quick settings or take a look at notifications and calendar appointments that have the same word or keyword inside. In the drag down notification shade, I can also turn on quick settings such as eye comfort. And this is a mode that turns off blue light filter and makes the screen have a slightly more yellowish tint to it. And that makes it easier on your eyes, more comfortable when you're reading in darker environments such as in bed. Also in the drag down notification shade is something called navigation dock. This is the same thing as kind of assisted touch on iOS and it gives you this little dot that appears on the bottom here and you can tap on this once to take a look at what you can do with it. Essentially you can tap on it once to go into the home screen by long holding. So for instance, again, if I'm in a different app, I can long hold on this button here to take me back and I can also rearrange it to somewhere else, maybe docked onto the bottom or onto the top or side of the screen. And I can also drag and flick to a certain side to access things like multitasking. So next tip pertains to the camera, and there's something called 3D Panorama, which is probably the most interesting out of all the other advanced modes that you can find in the settings. And what 3D Panoramic does is, instead of taking just a traditional panorama, it allows you to then pan and tilt afterwards to uh, kind of view back the experience in a VR-like uh, interface. So if I tap on the 3D Panoramic that I just took, I can then tap on the 3D key for it to render for the first time. It's going to have a very cool visualization, but this is actually not using the narrow processing unit, as Huawei have said, but you can now tilt and it gives you a real-time view of what the experience is like as you are moving around in that same space. Next, I can also pinch out from any of the main screens here to have access to additional settings, such as changing the wallpaper. I can also change things like widgets and change the transitions, such as a perspective, squeeze, box, so that changes the way that I animate between the different panels. Uh, so it gives you more customization than on a standard Android phone because of the EMUI. And the same thing goes with the wallpapers. Even though this isn't really a kind of dynamic wallpaper that is animated in the background, it is in a way alive. Uh, depending on the time of the day, the color of the mountains will actually change. So if it's purple, it means it's near dawn. If it's blue, it's nighttime. If it's yellow, it means that it's in daytime. So it does actually have some changes that correlates with the weather and time outside. 
The next tool will be Huawei Health, which is something that I think many people may overlook at first, but it tells you some basic fitness status, such as number of steps you've walked, calories burned, and how much longer you should exercise for to meet a daily goal. And it's actually surprisingly precise because it's using a nice accelerometer on the phone to estimate your footsteps. You can also bind to other Huawei devices like smartwatches, smart bands, and scales to get a more accurate measurement of your body metrics. The fitness also comes into play on the unlock screen, where you can see number of steps taken daily on the very bottom of the panel. So in settings and the battery tab, you're able to see how much time is approximately left on your device, and you can even change the screen resolution from 1080p to only 720p if you want to uh, extend the battery life of your phone, but uh, make the resolution a little bit lower. I can also change the size of the display by using the three Android keys below here in a gesture very similar to MIUI. So I can swipe from three buttons over to have a one-handed view that makes it easier to navigate since this is a very long phone with a six inch panel and makes everything more accessible. I can swipe back to extend the view or I can swipe in the other direction to make it in a right-handed experience. And speaking of battery, here's the ultra power saving mode that essentially turns it into a dumb phone or a feature phone and turns off all the other excessive services. You can still add up to six uh, commonly used apps in the main screen here, but there's no more ability to go back and take a look at the wallpaper. It also turns the theme dark just because this is using an AMOLED panel, and that means if it's uh, actually on a pure black image, it's it's uh, using no power at all. So it's kind of smart, and you're restricted to things like calling people, messages, the screen brightness is also turned down, and that will extend the battery life even more. And speaking of battery, I also find that the supply charger that the Mate 10 Pro comes with is also quite impressive when it comes to speed. It's called a supercharger. It's not the same technology as Qualcomm's Quick Charge, but uh, as long as you're using the supplied USB Type-C cable along with uh, the supply charger that it comes with, you can enable what's called supercharging mode. And this is a feature that's kind of overlooked, so make sure that you get a compatible charger instead of just using a random Type-C cable, because it can significantly improve the charging rate of your phone. It also has a pretty cool kind of animation as it's charging and even gives you decimal points for percentage of the battery remaining. Under motion control, you can also flip to reject a phone call or pick it up to answer a phone call. If it's winter and you're wearing gloves or thicker articles of clothing, you can also enable gloves mode, which makes the screen super sensitive. But you can have a fabric underneath and the screen can still be responsive as you can see there. So another little shortcut, uh, and again, I believe the idea of really precise and sensitive screens that you can use with gloves was first introduced by Nokia, but now the industry is adopting it more and more. One feature pertaining to the camera, which I alluded to in the full review of the Mate 10 Pro, is you can snap a quick image even when the phone's display is completely off to save on time, because by the time that you unlock the phone and launch into the camera, you may have already missed a moment that was in front of you. So to do this, you would simply tap on the volume down key two times even when the phone's display is off and it captures an image very quickly. In the lock screen of EMUI 8, I can also swipe up to have access to some commonly used apps. For instance, I can turn on the flashlight without unlocking the phone, I can also access, let's say, the calculator without unlocking it for a very quick uh, access to these utility tools. I can even do things like start recording a voice memo without unlocking the phone for interviews. And I can also do things like access the stopwatch as well as a QR code scanner. Other unique Huawei apps, including a smart remote, which uses the IR Blaster hardware on top of the Mate 10 Pro to control your televisions, as well as air conditioners, as well as other devices that have an infrared receiver. So you can then, for instance, tap on a TV, find the device by manufacturer list, and here's a compass app, which uh, is actually quite useful, and it also tells you things like the pressure and altitude levels down below as well, uh, because there is a parameter built into the sensor set of the Mate 10 Pro. Now, very interestingly, just like on many other phones, I can tilt up more than 180 degrees to get a live view of the surroundings that I'm in, and it continuously tells you the, where north is pointing at, in addition to the direction that you're in as well. Uh, so additional features to the UI. Next, if there's also a built-in phone manager with EMUI, so it's able to optimize things like memory as well as security by scanning through your downloads and files to see if there's any security warnings that you should probably take note of, deleting things that are in excess with the memory, so you can optimize the phone experience just by tapping on this every once in a while. The next tip comes with the video player. So you can actually tap, let's say, to play a video clip, 
and from here you're actually able to scrub back and forth between specific parts of the video and in the case of a slow motion video you're able to see what parts are actually slower which parts are faster uh, by the dots so the dots which are further apart means that this portion of the video is in slow-mo versus the consistent ones means that it's in regular uh, speed. When I'm playing back a video, I also have the ability to change the brightness of the display by using my finger and dragging along on the edges of the panel here to easily toggle the brightness. And on the other side, I can also use my fingers to change the volume. When playing back a track, I can also sw swipe left and right anywhere on the display to change and uh, skip between different parts of the video as well. Furthermore, if I'm playing back a track, I can also go back home, tapping on this minimize key will allow this video to be floating in the background as I'm performing other tasks. The next feature I'm going to talk about is if you long tap on the home screen and you go into advanced settings, it gives you a few other adjustments. So you can actually auto-rotate the display so you can allow the screen to rotate even uh, in the main home screens if you, you know, want to use it in the landscape view uh, even as you are uh, so just swiping back and forth between your apps. Furthermore, you're able to change things such as uh, the ability to shake to auto automatically align specific apps and widgets as well as to loop the wallpapers. So you can actually have it in a cycle where it just goes back and forth between the multiple panels. But in order to access this feature, you have to disable the uh, Google feed. So for instance, if we now go back and uh, we will see that we no longer have the Google feed, but now we have an infinite loop. It's a little bit unfortunate that it's only one or the other, and I can't have both the Google page as well as the infinite scrolling, but it is what it is. Now to auto align these apps, you simply shake. So I can do this and you can see all the apps have now flicked into a more organized pattern. So that's our extended tips and tricks for the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, as well as EMUI version 8.0 in general. And we're eager to see how Huawei uh, designs their next batch of uh, devices as well as how they continue to evolve their uh, UI and UX experience on phones down the road. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This was a closer dive, tips and tricks at the Huawei Mate 10 Pro EMUI version 8.0.